Good evening. It is no secret drug overdoses are increasing all across the country and, of course, right here in Southern Nevada. Thanks for joining us at 6. I'm Denise Valdez. And I'm Brian Loftus. It was last year that 330 people died from an opioid-related overdose in Clark County with fentanyl to blame more often than not. And earlier this year, lawmakers changed how the state prosecutes fentanyl possession. But there's just one problem. 8 News Now investigator David Charns tells us what it is. What has fentanyl meant for your family? Ah, well, I mean, it, it took my brother two years ago. You could say fentanyl has taken a lot from Giuseppe Mandel. Unfortunately, he got some cocaine and had fentanyl and he didn't know, and, and that was it. Just trace amounts in each. He is Angelo Mandel, Giuseppe's brother, who died from a fentanyl overdose in 2021. He wasn't planning on going and doing heroin or fentanyl. Angelo wasn't and neither was Giuseppe. This is a photo of him at what he says was his low point. A former high school athlete, Giuseppe got a back injury and soon was taking oxycodone. That later turned to heroin. My dealer came. She said, I have heroin. I don't have uh, pills. And I said, don't shoot up. She goes, no, what? I'll do it for you. And I was so sick. I was just like, I mean, I'll do anything not to be this sick. Giuseppe was living on the streets, not knowing if the drugs he was ingesting possibly laced with fentanyl would kill him. Sometimes I don't realize how far I've come because I try to stay busy helping others. Now Mandel is helping others, working in outreach to get people into treatment. At least every week I hear five to 10 people dying. And even more than that OD. Four years ago, I had never seen fentanyl. And now I just hear about it nonstop. Holding drug dealers accountable for selling fentanyl is proving difficult. Say this sugar packet has some fentanyl in it. Under the old law, a drug dealer would be responsible for the entire packet. But under the new law, they're only responsible for the part of the mixture with fentanyl in it. Trouble is, not everyone has the technology to do that. Frankly, fentanyl is becoming so ubiquitous that it's in everything. Nevada Democratic Attorney General Aaron Ford helped craft that new law, which makes trafficking a crime over 28 grams. Ford wanted that threshold to be four grams or just a couple of pills. So what we're endeavoring to do is to make the, the, the system here more precise. Changes include half a million dollars for two machines to test specific drug mixtures. The money's there from more than a billion dollars in opioid settlements. The machines are not. Is it correct to say that even though we have these standards in law, that there is no way right now in the state of Nevada to actually measure the amount of fentanyl? Uh, that's a correct statement. Ford says the changes are meant to go after traffickers, not users. No, I think that we're making strides. Giuseppe Mandel says society is making small changes towards solving the bigger problem of substance misuse. It's an unwinnable war. Right? There's no winning this war, but it's about each little battle. A larger battle he hopes to continue winning for his brother and himself. Opponents of the new law equate it with the failed war on drugs. In June, lawmakers said those new machines would take a year to buy. And right now they're figuring out how much it would cost to get them in all crime labs across the state. I'm David Charns, 8 News Now. So we asked Metro Police about its uh, capability to test drugs and if they would also need these new machines. We did not receive a response in time for our deadline.